A few years ago, the internet was set ablaze by this picture of Cao Jia Wan Metro Station, seemingly leading to the middle of nowhere. Everyone was making fun of China for building metros to nowhere and claiming that they're stupid. Now, here's the station today. The surroundings have been built up and the station serves a brand new district. In this video, we'll take a look at why building transit first and the rest later is actually a good idea. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing to this channel. We're so close to 1000 subscribers, so let's reach this goal. Thanks and on to the video. First, let's take a look at why most Canadian and American cities have barely any transit. From the founding of the first cities like St. Augustine, Florida, up to the second half of the 20th century, cities were built in a dense, mixed-use pattern, encouraging people to walk or later on, take transit to their destination. Walkability and access to transit raised the taxable value of the land, providing the city with enough money for services such as water and power infrastructure, sewage treatment, and more. After World War II, the suburban experiment began. Cities got spread out, massive new suburban districts were built, and tons of infrastructure got constructed to serve a relatively small amount of people. The suburban experiment was completely built around a car, transit was almost completely excluded. Existing public transportation infrastructure was gradually torn down and replaced with buses or with highways and private automobiles. This pattern of suburban development continues to this day. In most American and Canadian cities, when a new district is built, a highway interchange and roads are built first. Then, city services like water pipes, sewage treatment and electrical wiring is brought in. This costs the city massive amounts of money with comparatively low taxable value because of the relative isolation from economically productive areas. This is called the Growth Ponzi Scheme by the urban planning nonprofit Strong Towns. Cities constantly need to build more and more terrible suburbs and take on more and more debt to avoid running out of money. Transit is either not built at all or it's shoehorned in later as a band-aid solution to traffic. Now, let's get to the main point of the video. Why is building transit first and the rest of the district afterwards a good idea? First of all, access to public transportation provides, quote, significantly greater health and economic gains, unquote, according to this study from Melbourne, Australia. After all, walking to a transit stop, even if it's just a short walk away from your house, will provide much needed physical exercise. Cleaner air from less drivers on the road and less injuries and fatalities from crashes also contribute to better health outcomes. The economy also benefits. After all, all those dead people don't really contribute much to the economy, with the exception of the undertaker. Local businesses also get access to more potential customers, and public transportation provides jobs for the local economy. Building transit first makes sure that the residents of the new district have access to transportation from day one, making going car-free easier. Second of all, planning a district around transit means that the station will be able to be utilized to its fullest potential. If transit is treated as a band-aid solution to traffic, it may not be utilized to its maximum potential. Third of all, planning a public transport line into a currently empty area is way simpler than dealing with numerous NIMBYs, or not in my backyard people, who might obstruct the construction of the new line. Now that we've got the theory out of the way, let's get to a practical example of this in action. The project that inspired me to do this video is this, the tramline from Sidliště Barandov to Slivenec in Prague. This line is supposed to serve the existing Holenia and Slivenec districts, but most importantly, it's supposed to be the transit backbone of a completely new set of developments. The extension consists of three new stations, so let's take a look at each one of them. The first one is called Náměstí Olgišheim Flugové, formerly called Kaskády. The surroundings are occupied by the Cascade Barandov development, which is a brand new housing district with ground floor shops enveloping the space around the station. This, in my opinion, is transit-oriented development done right. Nice, dense, mixed-use development with a public transport line running right through the middle. The streets in this new district are mostly named after famous actors, directors and playwrights, such as Verichova and Voskovcova, named after the legendary Czechoslovak theatre duo Jan Verich and Jiří Voskovec. There's also Hugo Haase and Mandlové, named after Hugo Haas and Adina Mandlova, both famous Czechoslovak movie personalities. The reason behind why these streets are named after theatre and movie personalities might be that the Barando Film Studios are located pretty close to the district. Next, the tramline continues to Holinje, with a stop of the same name. This area is much less developed, with the station being located pretty much in the middle of a field. 
This was the terminus station until the recent extension to Slivenets opened. Right now, the station doesn't feature much, just a shelter and a path to the existing Holenia district to serve the single-family house district there. And finally, the terminus of the new tramline is located on the edge of the Slivenets district, with a stop of the same name. This station is located in the middle of a field as well. An underpass was built under a four-lane arterial road running through there, so the residents of Slivenets can access the station, but the main purpose of this line is the future development that's going to be there. According to Adam Scheinherr, the former deputy mayor for transport, the surroundings of the new line are supposed to be home to 8,000 people. I will now translate one of his quotes, the original will be in the description. Quote, In the surroundings of the new line, a new city district for 8,000 people will spring up. In the moment of the first people moving in, there will be a tram line, which will get them comfortably to the city center. Building new cities inside of cities, and transport infrastructure, thanks to which they will work well, that's the only way forward for growing the city. We are correcting a historical mistake, in which the outside parts of the city suffered from the fact that rail didn't reach them, and the locals had to rely only on buses." Unquote. The line is also supposed to serve a new park and ride, and a new shopping center. I hope that in the future, the Holenje and Stevenets tram stop will be similar to Namiesti Olkesheimflugova, located in the middle of new, dense, lively districts. Another example of this is near the airport in the northwest of the city, in the Ruzenje district. An existing tram line was extended from the Divoká Šárka stop to Dědina. The extension serves a block housing district called Sídliště na Dědině and some single-family homes, but the biggest plans are yet to be realized. The terminus of the line is located in Dedina, around the new dense housing development, and near to some single-family homes. However, there is still a lot of space for future development around the station. In the future, the line is supposed to be extended to an all-new transit hub called Terminal Dlouha Mila, located roughly here. Terminal Dlouha Mila is supposed to be a railway station on the planned line to the airport, a bus terminal and a tram stop. There's supposed to be a park and ride next to the terminal, encouraging people to leave their car in the outskirts of the city and take transit for the rest of their journey. In conclusion, I believe that building transit first and the rest of the district afterwards is a good idea and a viable solution to growing cities. It ensures that residents have access to transit from day one, brings numerous health and economic benefits, and makes the district a more pleasant place to be. The tram boom in Prague is continuing, like with the recently approved line from Kobylice to Zdiby and eventually all the way to Odolena Voda, making it the first Prague tram line to cross the city limits. Hey, thanks for watching to the end, you're a real star. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing, it would help out a lot. This has been Tramly and I'll see you next time, bye!